Okay, so these are some more, we're building up to some warning signs. Now, individuals in relationships and cults and nefarious governments, Mm -hmm. who shall be unnamed, um, one of the main main ways they control people is through fear. And this is a classic one. It doesn't have to be fear that something's going to happen to you. And I want to point out, Chris, that since we've been on the air, I have not glanced at the freaking monitor even once. Oh, Ross will be very happy. So I'm looking you. at the camera. He won't be sending me Slack messages and saying, you. did Mike have a stroke? And I'd like to yeah. celebrate that fact right now by doing this for the first and only time. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the gesture. Now, if you're listening, uh, I have just pushed my lower lip out with my tongue for no good reason. Go making YouTube. weird facial expression, opening my fingers wide, and jamming them together three times. He's been coaching on an me on how to do this very strange <laughs> gesture. I have. There's, I teach him how to do it. There's, there's always <laughs> these subtleties in how you do these gestures or interventions, like the, the, <laughs> the invisible, intervention. you know, the invisible tie, tie. intervention where yeah. you go, oh, not very interesting. You Use the other hand to, to hold the bottom You're pretending of the tie. to adjust your tie, and I'm trying to describe this accurately and for failing. the listeners, but I think we actually have to do a YouTube video on that pattern. Anyway, let's continue. Okay, let's so continue. fear is a classic way, mm-hmm. and not just fear of, oh, something bad will happen, mm-hmm. but not just fear of physical violence, but fear of things like, oh, I will leave you. That That's oh, control. Yeah, that's a terrible sure, one. For or sure, for sure. I'll tell people your secrets. All I know, you know, people become intimate with someone that you find out stuff about my, God knows I got a thousand things that could sink your freaking ship in an instant. So if but, you're, <laughs> so if you're, yeah. You didn't even so, say anything. No, I didn't know you were talking really? about me. I didn't oh, I even, you are. You are I didn't even realize it was a joke. It was a joke. Yeah. But, um, it was funny but, you know, to in you. in marriage, anybody can, we, we open up and we talk about stuff and, and in a bad relationship, people will hold that against you. They'll hold oh, yeah. it over your head like a proverbial sort of Damocles, mm-hmm. he says, invoking Greek culture. But um, that's interesting, isn't it? Fear, it can be fear of just about anything. Fear of de- ending the relationship, yeah. fear of financial loss. You know, if you don't do this, this will happen. And I said, nefarious governments have used this as well. Uh, when people are afraid, they become more suggestible. Why are you leaning like a freaking matador? Oh, I, I was just going to point out that I was very admiring how your posture is, is very Milton Erickson esque. What, what look, look like yeah. I'm in a freaking wheelchair. <laughs> Thanks, no. buddy. Well, you were just, I was adjusting you my posture. Like this. I was fixing my posture. On you, put a nice fist calibration. On I'm doing the Captain Morgan pose here. All right. Now, that's interesting because when I used to play Dungeons and Dragons when it first came out a million years ago, I would always ride into a town and I would describe to the dungeon master, I'm riding with my fist on my hip. <laughs> and he'd say, you're just going to cause problems. Just ride in normally. It doesn't have to be an attitude. Okay, so look, fear, so fear weird. of loss, fear of retribution, fear uh, of disclosure. If somebody is making you feel like you will lose something, whether it be your personal safety and security, yeah. the connection with a person, perhaps the, the person who's controlling you, yeah. a connection with your family, yeah. moving you, uh, causing you fear in some way, yeah. that's a sign. That's a it's bad a, It's sign. a very bad thing. Mm-hmm. And some people control uh, through passive aggression. Okay. Foot, foot dragging. Describe for people listening, watching, what passive aggressive means in okay. the simplest possible terms. I'm going to give terms. you a perfect example. Okay. Passive aggression controls people not by doing anything, but by intentionally not doing things. So they don't, uh, passive aggressives don't give your message. Oh, so like, they forget oh, to tell yeah, you things. the doctor did call. Yeah, well, and, I, um, thought, I thought you knew. Mm-hmm. In fact, you know our friend Paul, one of the funniest things seemed passive aggressive, and it wasn't. His daughter Jennifer, who's my courtesy niece, I've known her since she was born, love her dearly, I'm her Uncle Mike. And she, just before Christmas a couple of years ago, we're all, she was making us Christmas dinner. And Paul said, just wish I could hear from that doctor. I had a bunch of tests done and I haven't heard. <laughs> just- Jennifer stops cooking because, oh, dad, he called. She, he said, when? She said, oh, about five days ago. He wanted to hear back from you before he goes on summer vacation. He's got your test results. And he's like, what? Now, a passive aggressive would do that intentionally. Okay, she, she had just forgotten. Right. Yeah. Now, we had a horrendous passive aggressive thing. And I'm going to frame this in ways that will not result in a lawsuit. Okay. But we had a passive aggressive who was connected to Heather and I, Mm -hmm. and we were doing a certain plan, and all he did was, "Mm, no, I don't like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Uh, yeah. yeah. Not crazy about that idea. And she said, wow, I'm not getting it right. I said, it isn't that. He has a plan of what he wants to do. And anything you suggest that's not that plan, he says no to, but he gives you the illusion of choice. Yeah. Well, inexorably steering you towards what he wants. Okay. It's and this a nasty was a situation thing. where the other party had some legal rights at that time. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. And, and what is amazing to me, Chris, I was thinking about this on the way here in the car. 
how I have managed to go 68 years with, with, without, him in going, the without going to prison for murder <laughs> is just amazing. Is is absolutely amazing. He's just kidding in case there are any hidden in microphones. Hidden microphones oh, wait, or yeah. overt ones wearing new, brand new jelly socks. Those of you looking. So the other one is isolation. Isolation is a classic means of control. We see it in relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a friend right now who's been going out with this guy for a couple of years and there's <laughs> red flags going up. Uh, he does things like his, her kids have said, oh, he has a lot of cell phones, a lot of cell phones. He's always leaving them here and forgetting a lot of them. And I showed how you can set the voice recorder and leave it overnight and then come back and, and hear what they've said when he's left. Um, he observed my wife and I arriving and then spun away in his car. He's got a little crappy car that's full of junk food and garbage, according to the kids. That's endemic with psychopaths. And serial killers, you'll see this in books like Whoever Fights Monsters, Robert K. Wrestler. Interesting. They have messy, horribly messy cars. Anyway, I'm not saying he's a psychopath, but I'm not saying he isn't either. This guy has now, since we went over and she wanted to know what we thought, he wouldn't meet us. He wouldn't, wouldn't well, he's always couldn't make it, couldn't make it. Yeah. And she said we had insights and congruence and these things in my understanding of handwriting. And so he has now, we believe, stopped her having any contact with us for over a year. That's From, wild. She had us because over. Because you, even though he's never met you, you've been described he, as this yes. interesting person and you're a threat. He's freaked out. Yeah. yeah. So controlling through isolation, keeping people away from friends, keeping people away from family and significant others who can have okay. input. In so fact, these are some warning friend, signs. For when sure my here. wife's friend was dying of mm -hmm. cancer, her husband tried to stop us coming to see her. That's and weird. Heather basically said, screw you. She's my, my best friend. I'm coming yeah. over. And we just showed up at the hospital. Wouldn't take no for an answer. And we saw her the day before she died. And I'm glad we did. But isolation, controlling people who isolate, that's a huge red flag. You are autonomous. Anybody who limits your autonomy is evil, Chris. Also, the one you said about not always the brow beating, you're correct. Mm -hmm. Because to control in a cult setting, they alternate love bombing. Yeah, we so were talking love about bombing. that. Okay. Oh, we love you. You're great. We're here for you. We're, right. we're God's people. All of this, whatever it is. But they alternate that with... Uh, despair. Okay, so, so you're putting someone in a position where there's enough love bombing going on. Love, I said that weird, love bombing. Love yeah, bombing very weird. going we'll on. That yeah. that, that's what they want. That's what the controlled person feels good with. Well, of course. When the love bombing's What's going happening on. with love bombing? You're you're building the human given to be part of a it's group. Their you're being affirmed. Right? It's their love language, right? It's their love language, and yeah. it's causing a massive dopamine release. So maybe release. there are gifts, maybe there are words of affirmation, maybe yep. there's quality time going on, or any of the other love language is what am I missing physical touch and acts of service so those and. things could be happening and then that's juxtaposed with with horrendous you are horrendous like anti-love languages well, we just did a video on this called the flip side of right. love languages so the opposite of that the brow beating the horrendous stuff and that leaves someone feeling stuck in the middle what am I am I loved or uh, am I hated right there we are there you yeah, go. that's a good point. It's the realize what the love bombing does is it causes a dopamine release. Yeah. Dopamine is a reward chemical, mm. and that's what it does. And finally, my last point, you'll get this. Okay. Controlling through heightened surveillance. There are cameras everywhere. Which creates fear. Paranoia. I'm being watched. Paranoia. Mm. And it's interesting. When so you think you can sometimes in a see job, it, actually, that makes sense. Like if in a factory, they'll put cameras just just for security purposes any here right oh so people feel that they're being watched yes of course and they don't even have to be active mm -hmm. and the interesting thing is uh, the most i ever saw that was when i did a lecture for the rcmp uh, which is canada's federal police in regina at the main depot i was one of the few civilians ever to do that at the time they took me that night to a casino in windsor and as the police, they took us past security right into the control room of the oh, casino. Wild. So we could watch the cameras. Like you see in Ocean's Eleven and, yes, and those and movies. just like that and tracking people going mm -hmm. through the casino. and uh, Unbelievable. Now, when you add that to the mix at Hell's Kitchen, I said to my wife, have you noticed the camera work is stellar? There's so many edits, so close-ups and that. They are using dozens and dozens of like button cameras yeah. that are all controlled to do this. That's why you never see a cameraman. You never see someone even in the crowded restaurant, but they're getting all these shots from every angle. Occasionally, you'll see a tiny little camera That's somewhere. That's amazing. Which so that takes puts away people... the presence of the camera, of mm. someone in your face. Right, which also means that because you you don't have that knowledge that, oh, there's the cameraman. I'm on camera right now. There's the camera. Yeah. You assume you're on camera 
all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Did That's you like right. How we did that? It was yeah, good. it was very well done. We should probably rehearse it next time. Okay, so the paranoia element of your the being paranoia watched. element. And and cults, nefarious governments, they use these same techniques all the time. People sleep in dormitories, just like at Hell's Kitchen, mm. which reduces individuality again. This earlier in the week. Scottish coffee. Just the idea just that kidding. you slide down that slippery slope, right? So, oh, I just, nice I just want you to do this. Just. And then the next time, oh, you just can't do you this just, today. You went just to just, just, all right. There, I just wanted to do this. <laughs> yeah, I know. And Slow progression towards worse situations. No, there's, I'm not saying that might be happening I'm not in saying places, it at all. or it isn't. We're going to say these points because this is so important. I'm going to give two sentences at most at each mm -hmm. one. Incrementalism is compliance sets done continuously. Once yes. you start to comply, it's very hard not to. So it's tiny, tiny, tiny steps, and then you look back mm -hmm. and you've given away a lot. It's called sliced bologna ploy. Oh, right. uh, bandwagon, mm -hmm. uh, putting you against the rest of the herd. Everybody else is doing this. Everyone is doing this. They do it in Hell's Kitchen. This group is doing right. this. We want to comply because we want to be part of the group, which is why, did you know this is why public speaking was such a huge fear for so many people? It's because wanting to be part of the group. And it was oh, Jordan and if Peterson. You're, and if you're up on stage, you're, up you're on stage not. And it's faces yeah. looking at you. You're opposite of the group. Yes. Yeah. And it's a scary people. For some people, not yeah. us. Okay. Um, so the, the bandwagon thing, you want to be part of the group. Repetition is the heart of propaganda. That was Joseph Goebbels who so said that. So if you can, and these all fit together, right? I'm looking, I'm looking at your notes. Just Don't, cheating, by the way. So yours. incrementalism and bandwagon, getting people to agree to things in a group, maybe before they have all of the information that would justify such an agreement, but getting right, them right. to do it and getting them to do it over and, and over, over and, and over. over again. Repetition. That leads to what later when start when people start thinking for themselves, there is now cognitive dissonance, right? Because well, I've course. already agreed over already agreed. and over so and you're I'm going part to maintain of this group. what you have committed right. to. I mean, look how we both bought the identical iPad Pro. Well, I so controlled you. I, I told like you to do it. when you turn your yeah. data on, oh, no, you didn't pay oh, for yeah, that option. Oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, the whole thing was just so I could say yeah, that. I no, know. look, just. I said just. just, just I didn't say just. Okay. Right. Uh, and another we're, we're one. Almost three gone, final points. An enemy, real or imagined. Ooh. If you focus everybody against an external enemy, somebody in that group, whatever, mm. that person on your team who's the O'Brien, who's under undermining everything. We're back to George Orwell, 1984 with that. We're looking Ooh. at, um, in 1984, it was Goldstein. They had to have... Uh, you know, intentional hate against this guy every day. So when we set up an enemy, it enables us to scapegoat someone and throw all of our aggression and hatred at that person. And when we do and it as a team, that enemy it could a be a thing too. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be a situation, couldn't it? Yes, it mm. absolutely could. Well put, Chris. You've redeemed yourself from oh, all the other errors in this. Thank you. Thank and you. Something... Are you just love bombing me now so you can shut burn? up? I'll never do that. <laughs> no, no, there's anything wrong with it. Um, an enemy, real or imagined, and I pointed out, uh, we look at Heaven's Gate cult, I said, you know, they're being evacuated. Charles Manson yeah. got people to kill. And we look at something like the Gulf of Tonkin incident in Vietnam. That's what started the Vietnam What's War. That? Uh, Vietnam War was started because the U.S. wanted to go to war against Vietnam. Okay. And there was no reason to. Okay. So they so had they a U.S. A ship reason. in the Gulf of Tonkin and reported that it had come under attack. Uh -huh. Vietnamese speedboats. So fake so attack. Oh, war. we have to retaliate <laughs> So now. let's kill 50,000 U.S. Uh, citizens. Anyway, whatever you believe about okay, that, read up on Gulf of Tonkin. This is mainstream now. I know nothing about this. So if, if of course, you're just of course making up history, conspiracy Chris, why would you? theory. I, so no. you're you're condemned to repeat the mistakes. Mm -hmm. the, ow, my hand. Damn it. I hit right on the very nerve of the hand. You do that a lot. I know. I think you have. It's like the Saturday Night Live <laughs> skit from about, I yeah. want to say 30 years you're ago. Sort of, there was uh, a skit called <laughs> No Depth Perception Man. I think I've told you about this, but it's hilarious. And I'm trying to remember who the character was it, it wasn't mike myers or anything right, but losing interest oh, it was yeah. no it might have been kevin nealon and he'd be at a table let's say and talking really loud yeah. about the dinner guests like did you know that they're about to get a divorce he's been cheating on her and the wife's like Shh, they can hear you and he goes no they can't hear they're way over there <laughs> you know I never saw that, but I will make a point of. <laughs> or he's in right the now. driveway helping the guy back up. Keep it coming. Keep yeah, one it example, coming. usually enough. And then the enough, car yeah. crashes through the garage. Right. Anyway, no, no depth no perception. No perception, man. There's Excellent. Mike Mandel. So here's here's my solution for all this. Some people are controlling, whether they're individuals and relationships, whether it's cultic groups, whether it's governments. Here's your answer: Be informed. Find out about this. Trust your gut. And when you get a bad feeling about something, your unconscious mind is attempting to tell you something. Part of the time, at least, open your eyes. Use your ability to see things from the outside. It's a human given that we as human beings are able to dissociate 
look at the situation we're in from the outside and go, ah, does this really Ooh. make sense? By dissociating, we get away from the controlling emotions. By getting away from the controlling emotions, we're able to make rational decisions. 